Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to show you how to work with the query options of the Posts module. The Posts module is one of the most powerful modules of Uncode. In fact, thanks to this module, it's possible to recreate all the post, page, portfolio, product, and post type indexes, which are seen on the main Uncode demo. Thanks to this module, it's possible to define any kind of list layouts, from masonry to metro to carousel and fluid variations. Unlike other themes that have preset layouts to select from, Uncode features a massive post module that allows you to mix more than a hundred amazing settings. The post module is a powerful creative tool in your hands. I create in this page a post module. Let's open the settings with a front end editor and start to explore the options. In this video, I'm going to introduce the first group of options, the general tab settings. In the general tab, there are the main options, like the layout and the query options, which represents the source from which the module will display the content. The first option is the unique ID. This value has to be unique for each module of the same page and is generated automatically when you create a new post module. Just be careful if you duplicate a post module you use on the same page to modify it. Then layout setting defines the main module style variation. As for this example, the layout can be a grid. All types of grids variations are part of this group and they are generated by powerful JavaScript library named Isotope. Or it can be a carousel. All types of carousels and slideshows are part of this group. In a carousel, the elements scroll sideways in a single row. Here we are with a carousel. Anyway, let's set again a grid layout for the moment. In the Query Options group, there are options to define the query. Queries in WordPress are functions to display posts and contents using different parameters and different types of content, basically the source that will be used by the posts module. When you open the query options, instead of using post articles, it's possible to select any of the other available post types. In fact, posts in WordPress refers not only to blog posts, but also to portfolios, product pages, and possible extra custom post types. Let's test to demonstrate how easy it is to set portfolio instead of posts. I set portfolio and I save the settings. Here we are. Now the module is using the portfolio query and it's displaying the portfolio items instead of the blog posts. Let's test, for example, product. Here we are. The post module is now using the products from our shop as source. Anyway, for this tutorial, I continue with blog posts, so I revert back to the first selection, posts. In post count, it's possible to define how many elements are used by the module. Now we have six elements in the posts count option. Let's try to insert nine. Save the module. And here we are with nine posts. Please note that if you want to display all the posts, you can insert the word all, but let's continue with nine elements. Order by allows to sort items according to some criteria, like date, that is the default, the ID, title, author, random, and others. While the sort order helps to reverse the order created. Then there are a number of options to refine the query. These options are quite intuitive. It's possible to display elements from a single category, tag or taxonomy. For example, if I enter travel, which is the name of one of my categories, it will include in the posts only elements from this category. If I insert business, the posts module uses only posts of the business category.
Clicking on the plus symbol is also possible to switch to the exclude mode. In this case, it excludes posts from the business category. OK, let's remove this option for now. The same is valid for the tags option. Note that if you use portfolios or products and want to filter by categories, you have to use the taxonomy field in WordPress and not the category field that is used for blog posts. So, be careful not to use the categories field to try to filter the portfolios and products categories, because in this case, you have to use taxonomies. The selective elements field allows us to restrict the query to specific elements. So here, you can enter the exact title of a post. Here I have a post that is Vibrant Portraits by Victoria Villasana. I start to type this title and I select this post from the suggestion options. When I save the module, only this post is used, since it's the only one selected. Vice versa, it's possible to exclude specific elements by clicking on the plus. Now this is the only post that is excluded from the query. With this option, it's possible to display only specific blog articles, portfolio items, pages or products in a post module. In the author field, as suggested by the name, it's possible to select articles of a specific author. From the post offset option, it's possible to remove a number of elements from the beginning of the query. Here it's possible to insert the amount of posts that should be skipped from the query. This is useful to exclude some elements that may already be used in another module present in the page. An example of this option in use is the blog newspaper, where each section has a different design. In this design, each post module queries some specific set of posts from the list, without repeating the same posts as each other. We display three articles in the header content block. Then there is a module with post offset set to three to exclude the first three posts. Then there is a post module styled as carousel with post offset set to six to exclude the first six posts and so on. Another example is blog magazine. In this case, the layout consists of two modules. The first module has a post count query of one post, while the second post module has the post count set to all and it has the post offset set to one. In this way, all articles are shown, excluding just the first article. Let's go back to our example and test how this works. Let's duplicate our posts module. Now I have two posts consecutive modules. Now I'm going to make a series of changes which are irrelevant for the tutorial to transform the first post module into a carousel style, something like a sliding header. So I'm not going to explain the options involved. I set the layout to carousel. I set post count to three. In the module tab, I set items visibility to one. I set the thumbnail ratio to two to one. I set the item gap to zero. I activate the dots navigation. In the block tab, I set the block layout to content overlay. I set content vertical position to bottom. I save the module. And here we are with our carousel. Nice looking, right? As you can see, since we modified the post count to three, now this module displays only the first three posts. Unfortunately, these three posts are also repeated in the second posts module. So I open the second posts module settings. 
and in the post offset I insert 3. Here we are. With this option, we remove the first three posts from the beginning of the query, and as you can see, we don't have repeated elements anymore. Basically, the second post module starts from the fourth blog post. Now we have two consequential modules that can be styled with different designs. The last option is the dynamic query. When this option is active, it's possible to revert the query to the native WordPress query for a specific context. It's generally used for creating category pages and archive layouts when the post module is used in Content Block. On a simple page like this, there is no default WordPress query, and therefore it is irrelevant. Note that when this option is active, the Build Query options are not taken into account, and the query used is the WordPress one. For more info, please reference to the Content Block and to the Category Pages videos.